Hey guys, it's Bill from London, Tennessee. It's about 96, 97 degrees here in the garage and pretty much all of it is humidity. But despite that, still doing stuff. This is a thing that I added. I wanted to show it in its raw state now. I'm getting ready to paint it. And then once it's painted, I will put it up in position. You can see what it does. And then we can talk a little bit further about flail mower issues. I did, well, I do have it all sort of disconnected. And these are my new little one inch spacers that I made. And they did a really great job. I think they, they did for me what I was hoping. Just lifted it up a little bit. It's not very much, but it's enough to make a difference, I suppose. It's enough to make a difference in my brain. And that's all I really care about. Uh, on the left side here, that is where the where it was cutting before, and in these uh, like three passes is where I cut it most recently. Well, four passes, anyway, and um, it does cut higher, obviously, about an inch, and I think that allows it to mulch a little bit better because I don't have near as much of this in here. This is all in here from the pass before where the wind just sort of blew it over. But it does a really, really nice job, and it stripes the yard really great. Uh, only problem with that is that I have to do like a 180 each time. Normally how I cut this is I'll um, go up that way, come over to about a third of the field, and then cut through the middle, and then come over here and go up that way, and then go on to the right side of where I did that cut through the middle of the field, and then just do uh, continuous loops. And I don't really know why I do that. I think I saw that uh, farmers do that in fields and it's more efficient for them. I don't know. I think it's less efficient for me because each time I go from the cut over to this cut, I'm not actually cutting anything and uh, pff, it doesn't matter. It makes me happy. But one, I think what I'll be able to do is with the flail mower, I'll be able to go up that way, turn to the right. Uh, sort of along the tree line back up cut that little part that I sort of missed by turning right and then come back down this way and then turn left back up and then go back up that way turn right back up go this way and back and forth like that and I think that'll uh, will eventually get all the grass cut and we'll make this really fab stripey pattern because, you know, that matters. Anyway, uh, let me get this painted and installed, and we'll see you in a bit. Here is the situation. Oh, first of all, let's go down here. That, that's what I did. So, hmm, let's go on the other side. That is what I did. The, all the weight of this implement and the brush hog, all that comes down through that front tube there. And it's also bared on these arms. In the case of this flail mower, the wheels support some of the weight. In the case of the brush hog, it's all supported by this lower structure. And basically all of that weight goes into these two little pins. Now when I put the receiver hitch in there, I did put some supports between the receiver hitch and those uprights there for those pins, but it's still all that way on the pin. So I wanted to have something a little bit stronger. This is the original pivot for the front tire, for the uh, front axle. So I just picked up with that. I got a block of uh, metal, um, just dug a three quarter inch hole in it. And then that just uh, picks up that just a three quarter inch chrome shaft just goes through there and there's a set screw on the other side that I'd tighten down and that just keeps that in place and that um very much uh will um equalize that load so it'll take it'll take all the weight off of those pins essentially and put it onto that um shaft and that is much better now problem with oh yeah and also on the end of the last video 
I had broken this, this little dooley whopper, and this it had just sort of gone up there, and you can see this crazy angle that it's at. It wasn't as bad when the when I didn't have the inch tall spacers in there, but it was still pretty bad, and it was it was pulling it sideways, and that's that's no good. So made that little dude. Here's the problem though. Now that especially that I have those one inch spacers on it. Uh, I still have that same problem of, as before, when I was first working on this, that rear pivot and that front pivot are kind of on a, on a pretty close straight line. And that top pivot is out ahead of the lower pivots. And these wheels. All right, I am going to step out of my comfort zone a little bit and try and do some fancy editing here. Uh, as I'm editing this and listening to my own description, I determined that it's very confusing. And what I'm trying to get at is, on this picture you can see I've got a green, red, and a yellow line. The yellow line with the little blue arrow is the lower mount. The red line is the center line between the forward and the rear mount, of course. And as that lower pivot moves up, it tries to over center through the red line. And there's no mechanism for the front of the mower to move as the back of the mower goes up and down. Uh, so I need to come up with a way for that to work. If you look at like a four link system in a car or truck or something like that, uh, the whole system moves together. And since the, the top pivot of the green line, the top pivot there is sort of out and ahead of the lower pivot, everything is just wrong and it's just all messed up. So I don't know if, I don't know if this actually clarified anything, but maybe all the lines will kind of help as we go on. Okay. Wheels are back behind the lower pivots. What happens now if the wheels go over a bump, a hill, whatever, if they go up a if they go up a hill, if they go up ahead of the tractor, the front of the mower dives down and it's basically pivoting around that front pivot and it's kind of it's kind of trying to over center everything i think of it like a pair of vice grips it's kind of trying to do that and i'm pretty certain that's why that link or that little uh hmm, <laughs> that little eye bolt broke before because when this goes up a hill that's putting tremendous amount of uh, strain on that chain and all of its mounting accoutrement. What do I need to do now to alleviate this problem? Oh, and then when and vice versa, if the wheels go down into a hole or something, the front comes up, which is great. That's fine. But this is all backwards. And the other situation I have, if you see, oops, if you see right there, I got my got some paint chippage there, and there's when this this goes up a hill anything more than about that far it runs into the frame so this this can't be there anymore i'll need to relocate this maybe horizontally uh vertically over here maybe somewhere somewhere out of the rain out of the way of the frame and that's kind of a bummer because you sort of want that at a at a pretty good angle you know this this angle you want that angle to be pretty good 45 would be optimal if I move it this way it becomes less than 45 and its effect becomes less mm. So I don't really know what to do about that either Perhaps I could put that down there on that On that uh, cross piece on that cross uh, bar perhaps maybe I don't know but That's that's one problem and then the other problem is what I've been talking about uh, the geometry of all this is just a nightmare. So I'm not really sure what to do about it at all. I think what I'm going to do in the short term anyway is just sit here on my little chair and stare at it and see if I can't 
mentally come up with a solution. And if I do, believe me, you'll be second to know. Well, I've been sitting here for a while and I came up with a solution and it actually works really, really good. It was uh, pretty simple and I didn't even have to make anything. And you can see all I did from back when I first started trying to do this, this piece, I just put it in there and then sort of split the chain up like such. And now what happens whenever the back tires go up, the whole mower moves with it, of course, and that pushes on the middle of the chain and it pulls the front up. There's still quite a lot of pressure going on there, of course. Pressure, tension, but uh, pff, that's it. Instead of, instead of that just being free, and then when this goes up, it just kind of goes up independent of that and tries to over-center everything. This goes up, that goes up, the whole thing goes up. There it is. Problem solved. Great. <laughs> okay. Well, that was weird. There was a child abduction alert, and I guess whenever there is one of those, it stops the video for you. So let's try this again. Did all that. And another thing that I did is I came over here and moved the location of this. This little tab was sort of in the middle, right about here. You know, but I just cut it out of there and put it on the bottom, moved it forward a little bit down to there. And now there's no there's no issue with anything hitting anything. And this can uh, this can move and flex quite a lot. It gets a little bit close right here, but it gets a little bit close. It doesn't actually hit, so that's cool. Uh, yeah, so that's uh, that's that problem solved. The next thing that I need to deal with, and I may may investigate some other solutions. Um, whenever the motor's on here doing its thing, it vibrates quite a lot, and the reason being, if you look here where my little receiver hitches. Of course, that's my motor plate. That's the only connection between this receiver hitch and that motor. It's just this little, I don't know, like a one inch wide piece of metal that's just welded in there. And uh, that's not really very good. I'm not sure how that has escaped me up until now. But I need to, I need to either come from here up with a gusset. I don't know how that would affect the other implements that I use, so I'm not going to do that because it could negatively affect implements. Or what I could do is I could put a little tab here, similar to this. See, it's just the double shear pin. I could put one of those right about here in the middle, and then whenever the motor is on here, sitting up here in space, then I could just have a little adjustable rod come down to somewhere and I, it needs to be adjustable because I need to adjust the height of this for belt tension. So whenever you get the belt tension set, you just put the rod in there, adjust it to the right size, lock it down and um, that or, or the better, but certainly more complicated way is to move this motor and <laughs> the motor actually just moved all by itself because it's sitting kind of precariously. Have a, 7 8 shaft. This is the coupler that was on my pressure washer, which I used about three times since I built it. But uh, so just have it coupled from here, go across the 7 8 shaft, support it on either end by some bearings to a pulley and some sort of an adjustment for the pulley. What the problem I see with that, and it's maybe not a big problem, is as you adjust this, it's going to have to pivot off of something, probably this back bearing. So when you adjust this up and down to take up slack for the pulley, it's going to follow an arc of something. It's going to have to move. It's got to move around somewhere. And then that, of course, is going to put a strange mm, twisting on this love joint. I don't want to do that. So the other solution, of course, is to have an idler. Um, this spins this way. So the torque is on this side of the belt, so the idler would just be on the back, on the back side of the pulley. Oh, I'm sorry, on the back side of the uh, belt. So if we got a belt on here, this that of course wouldn't be there, but the idler would just be back here, pushing against that, and it'd be adjustable. Um, yeah, 
I think what I'm going to end up doing is I'm going to head on over to work and look around in the scrap bin, see if I can't find a, a nice piece of 7 8 inch rod that's roughly that long. Probably go ahead and um, machine a keyway on one end for that and then figure out where that's going to be, find out the length of it, cut it off, and then just for mock-up purposes, I could put all the bearings and all that stuff in, come up with some sort of a motor mount, and <laughs> see what I mean? That's a lot more work. So I may just invest, I may just do what I was saying before uh, about putting a, uh, a hold on. Okay, well now that I'm looking at that, that's not going to work. Because I'd need the adjuster to come from this way, and obviously there's nothing to go against, so it'd have to come back this way. And I guess it could, but then it would just be holding on one side. Maybe I need to look at my other implements and see how badly it would, how big of a problem it would be to have something go from here to here. Well, of course it'd be a big problem because there's a, a big uh, pulley in the way. Where's my big pulley that's going to be in the way? Here's my big pulley. Yeah, there's a big pulley in the way. So I can't I can't do anything with that. Try and stiffen that up. Hmm. 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 I don't know. Maybe I'll get my little chair and sit back there and look at it. I'm gonna go ahead and publish this for now. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.